This video is sponsored by Linode. Sign up with my referral link, linode.com eg, and receive a $20 credit to your account. In this video, we're going to be using Ansible to set up and create a Minecraft game server container running on a Linode instance. In many ways, this video is a spiritual successor of a previous video I did where we used Ansible to set up a Team Fortress 2 server in Azure. Now, Linode has a pretty great API and a CLI tool that you can use to create your instances and whenever else. But to keep things simple and to follow the format I established in the previous video, we're going to create our Linode instance straight from the Cloud Manager. Now, if you aren't already familiar with Linode, they are a cloud service provider similar to Azure and AWS, except Linode really focuses on having super fast and lean instances, along with services that support your instances like automated backups, load balancers, and domain services. However, the only thing we'll be creating in this video is a Linode instance. So when you go to create your instance, you'll notice that there's over a dozen images to choose from, not to mention any private images that you've created from other instances. The Ansible playbook I wrote uses roles that are compatible with Debian and Debian-based distros, so for this I'm going to be using Ubuntu 18.04. Linode has a bunch of different regions which you could think of as data centers. For this video I'm going to use the UK because why not? And for the Linode plan I'm going to use a basic Linode that is 2 gigabytes and 1 CPU. For a Minecraft server you could probably run it on a Nanode which is like a really really small instance, but for this I'm just going to use the Linode 2 gigabyte instance. I'm going to name the instance demo, I'm going to have the root account use my SSH key, and I'll use a root password because why not. So all in all, this instance is going to cost $10 pretty much regardless of the usage, and the charges are prorated if this instance is deleted before the end of the month. So that's cool. So after a couple minutes, our instance is booted up and just about ready. It's not reporting the CPU usage or pretty much everything else because this instance literally just started. But we should be able to SSH into it, so we'll grab the IP address, we'll open up a terminal window, we'll SSH into the instance as root. As far as I know, all the base Linode instances use root and don't create any other users for you. So if you want to create a super user, you'll have to do that on your own. But here we are, our very own Linode instance. So now that we've verified we can log into the server, it's time to check out Ansible. Ansible is a simple configuration management tool that helps automate and document through code various tasks and operations to perform on machines. In this case, we're going to be using an Ansible playbook I wrote to create our server user, install Docker, and configure the security settings, including fail to ban and UFW, which is the firewall. Now setting up a firewall on your instance is particularly important because if you're used to Azure or AWS where you have security groups to lock down your security and things, Linode doesn't have anything like that, so if you want to control your ingress and egress, you have to use a firewall. This Ansible playbook I wrote uses a mixture of roles from Ansible Galaxy along with some tasks I created to finish setting up the instance so we can run our game server on it. You can think of an Ansible role as a set of tasks that somebody else wrote in a way that can be shared with everyone else. In the roles section of the playbook, you can see a list of four roles. The first role sets up an unprivileged user for our game servers to run under. The second role sets up unattended updates, fail to ban, and it disables root login from SSH. The third role installs both Docker and Docker Compose, and the fourth role sets up our firewall, which is UFW or uncomplicated firewall. After Ansible runs the rules on our Linode instance, there are four tasks that get executed. The first task authorizes the GSC user with our public key so that you can log into the instance as the GSC user instead of the root user. The second task adds the UID hook to the GSC user's bash RC so that it can access the volume shared by the game server container. I'll explain exactly what that means in just a little bit. The third task uses git to clone the game server container repo onto our Linode instance and the last task fixes any permissions issues that may have occurred on the GSC user's account while running the playbook. Now these tasks and roles use variables that are defined in the demo.yaml file in the vars folder. Unless you're feeling adventurous, there's no reason to change any of these variables, but they're available if you want to. Now you may have noticed at the top of the playbook there's a section that says gather facts false and pre-tasks. What this odd little section does is it checks to see if Python is installed on the instance we're running against, and if it's not, it will install the minimal version of it. Ansible itself needs to be installed on the machine that's running Ansible, but the machine that Ansible is interacting with, in this case our Linode instance, needs to have at least Python installed. Alrighty, let's run this playbook against our Linode instance. So first I'll make sure my public key is located in this directory, 
and then I'll take the IP address for our Linode instance and paste it in the inventory file. And once that's done, we kick off the playbook. Now this playbook takes around about five minutes to run, so we'll do a little editing magic to fast forward to the end. And voila, our Linode instance is provisioned with a new user, all the security stuff, Docker installed, and the game server container repo cloned down and ready to go. From here in the Linode instance, we CD into the game server containers folder and then into the Minecraft folder. And literally all we do is Docker compose up. Docker will pull down the base image and begin the install process. Now, the Minecraft server that comes with the game server containers repo is a spigot server, which is basically a high performance and highly optimized server side version of Minecraft. There's no difference from the player's perspective, but on the server side, it runs much better and uses way less resources than the standard server. The one downside to using Spigot is it tends to take a long time to install and set up. So it's gonna take about five minutes for the container to fully install and set up. But once it's finished doing what it's doing, the Minecraft server will start and you have your very own Minecraft server running on your Linode instance. Now, when we ran the Ansible playbook, there were variables set up that told UFW to open ports required for Minecraft. So the complicated fort forwarding stuff is already set up for you. So all you need to do now is log into your server. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on for this video is how to sort of interact with the files for your servers that are now on the Linode instance. So at this point, you have a fully working and operational Minecraft server, which is awesome. But at some point, you're probably gonna to wanna to change some configuration regarding the server, whether it's the server name or adding a password or adding yourself as an operator, you know, whatever. Now you can obviously use Nano or Vim straight from the terminal, but if you're anything like me and you prefer a more UI-centric way of doing things, you can access the server from your file browser and modify the configuration files with your favorite text editor straight from your desktop. So I'm using KDE and Dolphin here, but you can do pretty much the same thing with Nautilus. For whatever reason, Dolphin uses a protocol called Fish. If you're using Nautilus, you do pretty much the exact same thing, only instead of doing fish colon slash slash, it's ssh colon slash slash. Once you feed your file manager the correct address, you'll have access to the files on the server. At this point, you can go to whatever file you wanna edit and open it in Kwrite or Gedit or whatever you like, make your changes and save it right there. Like I said, this is totally optional, and for smaller changes or whatever, using Nano or Vim is just fine. And that pretty much wraps up the video. So like I said at the beginning, this video is sponsored by Linode. However, I personally use Linode to host all of the EGIO game servers and the EGIO website. If you like this video and you're interested in getting your feet wet with Linode, you can sign up with them and get a $20 credit by using my referral link, linode.com eg. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the description for more information and a link to my Patreon. I appreciate all of your support, and thanks for watching.